Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what do you think about the Deno project? So let's get into it. Now, what is the Deno project? That would probably be the best first thing to start off with, right? Well, the Deno project is an attempt at making Node.js into something, let's call it safe. But I would even go one further and maybe say that it's an attempt to make Node.js into something more enterprise worthy, if you will. Let me explain. You see, Node.js suffers from a few problems. The two main problems that you have with Node.js at this point in time is first and foremost, well, it depends on what you mean by a problem. It depends on how you view it. But the original creator behind the Deno project, Ryan Dahl, is also one of the IKEAs, the main country. Well, he was the original person behind Node.js as well. So basically, Deno is an like to me, it feels like the second iteration on 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 Node, and basically, it addresses the two fundamental or tries to address the two fundamental issues to do Node at a really large scale. And the first thing is to have the typing system. Now, what are you talking about, Frederick? Is are we is Deno about creating a type version of JavaScript? Well, no, it is about creating a runtime, a safe runtime for TypeScript. And that's, that's pretty much as far as I'm willing to, like I'm not gonna say, uh, because the project is still very early stage, but it's a very interesting project. It looks very promising. Um, and I mean, I'm, it's one of my personal favorites. I think it's a pretty cool idea to have this, uh, to, to take this step and actually try to make something that runs TypeScript just natively. And the second thing that it tries to address is the security issues. Now, the security issues that Node has uh, at, at this point in time is that any process that you are running has full access to your network and to your file system, as long as you're running that process as somebody who has access rights to those things. And, you know, it, of course, it depends on the environment. But if you think about that a little bit, and then you consider the open source community that is oriented around Node as, as a concept, it's a pretty big problem for, well, for larger scale application development. And although it may not be the biggest problem, and it may not even be the most critical thing, it is something that is going to have to be addressed at some point. You see, one of the benefits, if you want to look at, the, at it that way, with having the sort of package structure and the sort of processes you have around libraries that we used to have with, you know, the Maven repository in Java, for example, is that it's pack these are packages that are tied into an organization. In other words, there's a process of screening in order to actually be able to upload anything. And the code that you are uploading is directly tied to you as an individual. In other words, it's a lot harder to get malicious code in. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder to create malicious code in a package dependency system where you as an individual are held as held accountable or you as an organization is held accountable in node it's very different now anybody pretty much anybody can upload anything and how do you then i mean because that's also one of the strengths and that's kind of the issue here because the strength of having everybody being able to contribute in this manner is that people, it's, there's a lot less hassle involved in just sharing the stuff that you want to make and the stuff that people may need and so forth. It's a very e efficient, convenient way of, of keeping people involved in the platform. But then we still need to account for the, these issues where people create security holes, because remember, this convenience come at the, comes at the security price. And that's what Deno tries to solve. And on the roadmap, you have things such as being like forcing 
the process to actually communicate, I mean to whitelist processes, in other words, allowing certain programs or code or packages and so forth to actually be allowed to do, say, network calls so that you actually, as an example, you can run your code and know that, all right, if some code in this packet of all these packages that you're using is making a network call, for some reason, you're going to be alerted about it because they won't be allowed to by default, which they are today. And as you can imagine, uh, it's a pretty bad thing if you have code, like if you have a package that can just make a network request whenever it feels like it, it's fairly easy to get an exploit in to your system. All you have to do is depend on a package that has some malicious code and all of a sudden they can make network calls whenever you're running that code. That's pretty bad. And things such as having access to the file system is restricted by default and this sort of stuff. And for me, on a personal note, what I like about the Deno project is that it's made in Rust, which is, it's actually an old video that I made where people asked me kind of about, all right, so how do I think about Rust and like its future and like how does that compare to say C++? And in that video, I actually do state that I think that it's not going to be, I don't think we're going to see like a massive rewrite of everything that is C++ related or C related over to Rust. But I do think that we will see new projects that makes, that is a system levels problem, if you will. Like these sorts of projects will very likely be, you will, I, I really do think we will see a lot more Rust development taking place. And then using this, is a pretty cool thing, I think. It's something that, yeah, I mean, it's just a personal thing. I mean, I enjoy the, I enjoy the Rust language. And considering what, what Deno is about, I think it's a very, very good fit for this specific problem. So to summarize, basically, the Deno project is an attempt, a second iteration on, well, at least from my perspective, it's a second iteration on Node, trying to basically take TypeScript, create a TypeScript runtime that is going to add more, a bigger, a higher level of security, like a higher level of security on top of the issues that we have in Node. And personally, I think that it's still very, very early stage. It's hard to say where this is gonna go. I can see a few things happening. It's possible that Deno creates another fork in the Node community, and like you have this like, separate, like you will have people on both sides, which not it's not a great thing for the community, but uh, that's a negative thing. Like that's a negative perspective, I suppose. On a positive note, I do hope that either it becomes something truly mainstream and it gets adopted into the Node ecosystem, or Node kind of. You know, we switch them out somehow. There, we, there come, we come to a situation where there's some type of collaboration going on, so that we can transfer the benefits of Node over to to Deno or vice versa. I think that the, having a strong coupling between the two could be a very beneficial thing. And hopefully, this project is going to go somewhere. It's still very early stage, but if you want to check it out, you can go to GitHub and subscribe and, and watch the project, just like I do. Have a great day.